Hello learners and welcome to a natural sciences lesson. So today we're going to be dealing with practice questions and application questions that are based on the, on the reaction between an acid and metal carbonates. So let's begin. The first question that you are given is, we need to give the general uh, form of the following reactions as weird equations. So we need to know what happens when the reaction between an acid and a metal carbonate occurs. So what is going to be the general form of this reaction? We know that if an acid plus or reacts with a metal carbonate, there are three things, there are three products that are going to be formed. We know that you're going to have salt, you're going to have water, and then the last one is going to be the carbon dioxide. Because the carbonates, they have the CO3 as the carbonate, that carbonate is going to break into carbon dioxide and oxygen. Then that oxygen is going to react with the, with the hydrogen that is, that is given off by the acid to form the water. So then the remainder of everything else is going to be our salt. So therefore, the product between these two substances is going to be, when they react, is going to be salt plus water plus carbon dioxide, which is our CH2, which is our CO2, sorry, CO2. Next question. Now, when the reaction between an acid and a metal, so what is going to be the general form of this reaction when an acid reacts with a metal? Again, acid is going to donate the hydrogen, but then the metal, because it doesn't have the oxygen or it doesn't have the hydroxide to donate, it's just going to be the metal, which means the only thing that is going to be donated is going to be the hydrogen from the acid. So that means the remainder after the acid has donated the hydrogen is or the, 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 the remainder of the acid after it has donated the hydrogen, it is going to be the, the non-metal part reacting with the metal part to form the salt. Then the hydrogen donated by the acid is just going to be there on its own being the hydrogen gas as the product. So the general reaction is going to be an acid plus the metal This is going to react to form salt plus hydrogen gas. So remember that hydrogen gas is a diatomic molecule. That means when we are writing them, it must be H2. Next question. Now, when there is a reaction between an acid and a metal oxide. So in this one, the metal has, 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 has an oxygen within itself, so it can be able to donate that oxygen to form the water because they, we know that the acid is, going, is always going to be donating the hydrogen. So that hydrogen plus the oxygen from the metal oxide is going to combine together to form the water. So the reaction, the general reaction here will be acid plus metal oxide they will react to form salt plus water. Salt plus water. And then now, what about now the reaction between an acid and a metal hydroxide? Again, acid to donate the hydrogen. Metal hydroxide, there's an OH here. The hydroxide is your OH. So that is going to be donated by the, by the metal hydroxide. So that OH plus the H from the acid combined together to form the H2SO, uh, the H2O, which is our water. Then the remainder of the two, the rem after the acid has donated the hydrogen, and after the metal has donated the, the, the OH, the hydroxide, the remainders are going to combine together, chemically bond together to form the salt. So the reaction will then be acid plus metal, Hydroxide, product, salt, salt and water. 
salt and water because now the OH has been given off by the, by the metal hydroxide, the H was given off by the acid. Now when those two things, when the OH chemically bonds with the H, they form H2O because there's two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Then the remainder will then form the salt. Now as you've said, the pH of the salt is going to be dependent on the, on the acid and the base that reacted. Next question, it says that, we need to give, so, so for, the, for the solutions of the following substances, we need to give the name of one example, and then we say if whether the solution will be acidic or basic, and then lastly, say if it has a low pH or a high pH. So let's just think about a pH scale for a minute. We know that neutral 7 starts from 0 going all the way to 14. The less than 7, it's acidic, and then greater than 7, it is basic. So a high pH means base, a, a basic substance, and a low pH means an acidic substance. And the lower the, 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 the lower the pH gets, the stronger the substance becomes, the stronger the acid becomes. Then the greater the, the, the pH goes, then the stronger the base becomes. So the strongest base will have the, the pH of 14, the strongest acid will have the pH of zero, and the neutral substance will have a pH of seven. So seven, that is neutral. So a non-metal oxide, so the solution of a non-metal oxide, we know that non-metal oxides, they form, a, they form acidic solutions. So number one, the substance or the name of one example will be, we can use sulfur dioxide, SO2. We know that sulfur is a non-metal reacting with oxygen to form a non-metal oxide. Now, number two, the solution Will that be acidic or will it be basic? We know that the non-metal oxide, they form acidic solutions. So therefore, that is going to be acidic. And number three, say if it has a low pH or a high pH. Obviously, if it's acidic, the pH is low because it's less than seven, right? If it, if it was basic, the pH is going to be high because it was going to be a greater than seven. So therefore, the pH of the acidic substance or the acidic solution will be low. Low pH, small letter P and capital letter H, which then means the pH is going to be less than 7. Now, metal hydroxides. Metal hydroxides, again, we answering the very same questions. We're answering the very same questions. We need an example of a, metal, of a metal hydroxide. We can take any metal from the group one elements or even the group two elements with the hydroxide. We know hydroxide is an OH. So we can take the most common one being the sodium hydroxide. Sodium is a metal reacting with the OH to form the sodium hydroxide. That's a strong base. So generally, uh, metal hydroxides, they form strong bases, which then means obviously that pH is going to be high because their pH is going to be above seven. So therefore, if now this sodium hydroxide was to be in a solution, will that solution be acidic or will the solution be basic? Because, that they, because they are forming a strong bases in general, then therefore the solution is going to be basic. And then, obviously, if the, if, the, if the solution is basic, then the pH of that solution is going to be higher, which means it's going to be greater than 7. So it's going to have a high pH, which is greater than 7, as we know. Remember, for you to be able to test if whether a substance is acidic or basic, we can use indicators. The most common one that you can use is a litmus paper. We know a litmus paper is going to turn red from red to blue or from blue to red, depending on the substance. Now, if the substance is acidic, the litmus paper, the blue litmus paper will turn from blue to red. But then if the substance is, is basic, blue litmus paper, I mean red litmus paper will turn from red to blue. So those substances that are telling us if a substance is acidic or basic, they are called indicators. Because we are not advised to taste anything and also to even put our hands in because we said the, the acidic, they feel rough in our hands and the, the, the bases, they feel slippery in our hands. It's not advisable for us to just dip in our hands and feel the, 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 the texture of that particular acid or base. So it's advisable for us to use the indicators. So before we move on to the next set of the questions, we're just going to quickly go for a short break and I will see you just after this.